Okay. You seem like you're concerned about how I very much, do you? So gas inside the tailor bubble moves slower than the tailor bubble speed. Okay. The <clears throat> There is some tau i, but they they neglect it. The model that included is the unified model, Chang unified model at the back. We will cover it soon. Okay, Monday, twenty eighth. Okay, let's do analog flow. For analog flow, the the way that we, we model it, we say okay, we have very high interfacial shear stress. Okay. So we have high Vg, and we said droplet can be inside of the core. So we have droplet entrainment. entrainment. Some droplet is in the gas core. Okay, that is the analog flow model. And droplet in the core, droplet in the gas core region deposit back to the film. So we have film, right? Film go up, a film can also go down, but most of the time, I think it should go up if you flow gas fast enough to the point where some of these have some kind of atomization, so the droplet release. So droplet, because of gas, it shear off the surface, then we have droplet created from the film. Why do we have a liquid attached to the wall instead of having it in core? What do you think? What do you think? What's your idea? But tell me, your question is very valid, but what do you think? Yes, yeah, surface tension of gas, so they want to be attached to the surface tension. They, they get it droplets as well. Okay, okay, okay. Let me ask you this. Uh, so, if we have gas flow in the middle, gas in the middle and film at the edge, flowing up. That's case one. Case two, gas at the wall and liquid in the middle moving up. Okay, we, you have liquid stream moving up and gas around it. You're talking about this, right? So why do we have gas in the middle and liquid around it? Why don't we have liquid in the middle and gas around it? Oh, gas won't get the wall, so yes. the wall can be dry. Uh, so, let me ask you this. Near the center and near the wall, which part has higher velocity? Near the center, right? So, if we have the flow, okay, scenario one, regular flow. Scenario two, uh, what do they call? Core annular. We have liquid in the middle. Okay. Most of the time, core annular is for liquid, for oil and water. Then you can have that. You can have oil in the middle, water around. So, the answer to your question is we don't know. We try to find the answer to why we have that kind of thing. We don't know whether gas should be in the middle or water should be around, so we do the test. And that's what we see. After we see that, some many people explain it based on the minimum energy of the system. Energy of the system is dependent upon kinetic energy, potential energy, surface energy. So when they do this thing, they say, okay, at that VSL, VSG, the optimum configuration they, they calculate total energy for several cases and find out that if it is scenario 1, the total energy is lower than scenario 2. So the answer is nobody really knows. They find it and they try to explain about it. Yes? So, so we, have, we, have, we have gas passes, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine there it is, the gas is going to uh, force liquid 
in some, some direction. And it is less probable to have it like just off work. So it's going to be, for example, the mm, margin. And go to the wall so and gas, go in the middle, blow through. So in that case, I don't know, call it inertial force. So they're going to make their way up. So the force that they're going to make is going to be marginal. So that's going to make liquid be around the wall. I don't comment on any of that. I don't know either. <laughs> okay, but okay, that is the way. There are several models that people use to explain this. Okay, gas. When you have one bubble, where's the bubble go? Do we have stack? Okay, let's say we have stack and liquid. We have one bubble. Will bubble go in the middle or bubble go near the wall? So we they find that bubble don't just stay at the wall. Bubble stay kind of in the middle, right? So. One other thing is that this kind of thing is really dependent upon the inlet condition or the initial condition. If we have inlet like okay, high pressure water stream in the empty pipe, water will go in the middle, right? Of course. High 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 velocity water jet. You jet the water, it goes in the middle and it's shooting out. We can have that. And let's say you have uniform gas inlet. From here has a tube, so it depends on the inlet condition. What is your inlet condition? I you know, yeah. I have the answer for that. <laughs> the inlet condition is very far, far away from the condition that you're taking a look. So let's say you have <coughs> a well going up like this. Uh, okay, let's say what we call well. Near the bottom, gas not expand yet, right? So we probably have slack. At the top, gas expands a lot, so it changes from slack to uh, annular flow. So before it changes to annular flow, gas is already in the middle for uh, slack flow. So it is more likely than not that gas will continue like that and it's expand. Okay. The, 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 the mobility ratio, for example. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on. Mo me, mobility me, ratio is for what? No, let me explain. Let me Flow explain. in porous medium. No, 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 no. <laughs> let me explain. He said, for example, to move the oil, you have to have the more viscous fluid to move it, for example, uh, not to have fingering. But if you use fingering. gas, okay, if you use gas, you don't have the fingering. So it's the same as here. So when you have gas, it's gonna since the viscosity is lower, so it's gonna finger inside, and everything is gonna be okay. Okay. Whether it is the same or not, I won't compare them. Okay, because one of them is for flow in porous media, another one is flow in the pipe. If it is the same, I don't know if it is coincidence or it is the same principle. Because flow in the porous media, the majority of the force will be Capillary force. You don't have capillary force here. Okay. Uh, we can talk more about it later. Can we? Can the difference of viscosity. The difference of the viscosity. I'm not talking about the permeability. Okay, that's the flow and porous media. This is the pipe. So you you like that idea of the viscosity? So the fingering happened because the low viscosity penetrated that. Why is that? So, but, so look, why is that? Is that a rule or something that lower viscosity should penetrate? First, first we know the phenomenon, so we can look for the reason. I want to mention the time and pressure. No, 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 but it is given. It is given. Yeah. Okay. 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 Several things can happen and could be your right. Shall we move on? <laughs> Shall we move on? You could be right. Uh, I uh, no, not 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 go back to anyone. Not even previous slide. Let's move forward. Okay, let's move forward. Um, this part is about another flow. We will discuss more, especially when you do your research or you can discuss more after class. Let's go over a little bit for another flow. Okay. Ah, pressure equation. Do you think you like to get up this and be like that it's considered a different, right? 
If you want it very accurate, you consider every term. Because you said If for vertical flow, this term could be 80% of your answer already. Of course, out of 10, you get 8, not 10, right? Does that 80% matter? <laughs> okay. So this is accurate, but not the full form is that. Okay, you see this. Your objective is to be able to estimate the pressure drop and use it in the project. And probably if it appears in the final exam, use it in the final exam. Or we don't have final exam, exam 4. Okay. So let's take a look at how to do calculation first, and then we will go through the detail later. So the first round will look like kind of undergrad thing. Just give you the formula. Formula number one. This formula. Without knowing anything or knowing any uh, description of the variable, Fe equal to that. You get this, right? This is a calculation step. Let me tell you calculation step first. So, without knowing physical idea or anything about this, calculation step is get Fe from bodies 1969. After you get Fe, Fe is based on phi, and phi is Vsg, mu g, sigma, or oh, that is very fine. So we can get Fe, right? That's Fe. So after we know Fe, then we can calculate I. I don't explain what I, anything yet. Uh, <coughs> I, oh, you don't, you cannot calculate I yet. So. Fe is uh, entrainment ratio, mass flow rate of the droplet in the middle of liquid phase over total mass flow rate. That's Fe, okay? Entrainment fraction. The mass flow rate that is, that it is droplet per total mass flow rate. So that's Fe. And that's about it. You use a graph. Look at the graph. Okay, Fe, you know, by now you know how to calculate Fe, right? Entrainment fraction. E is entrainment. After we know Fe, we can calculate Reynolds number. Use this formula. Okay, rho over mu QL. QL is a volume to flow rate, cubic meter per second. <coughs> Fe that we got earlier. So there is Re sub F. Reynolds number of the film. So once we have Reynolds number of the film, we say, okay, the core m equal to pi 2, this is the exponent, okay? This is the exponent. So you get Fe and Ref. So this is, without going to any detail, uh, telling you how to do just the calculation of pressure drop, okay? You see this equation. Minus DPDL sub SL, superficial liquid velocity. Superficial liquid velocity, we can calculate it up front. 2F rho B square over D. But this F is uh, not regular F, it's the friction factor that is based on uh, superficial liquid velocity. Reynolds number will be rho V D over mu. And that V will be VSL, and that D will be diameter. Yes. That's you have F D. Yeah. So R E F and that that thing is not the so same thing. The two R E Fs are different, right? We not give you different values. This oh sorry. Because one is using the hydraulic D F and the other one just leaves D. Are they the same? This line. I don't think so. And that line. Or, okay. Or they are the same. I haven't shown you the derivation yet. They are the same. But you use just this. They are exactly the same. The derivation is uh, this kind of thing, okay? We don't show you yet. That's the derivation. 
they are the same. So you know how to calculate superficial uh, friction factor, right? C and N. So N is 0 0.2, C is 0 0.046 most of the time for liquid phase. So how about gas core, superficial core friction factor? Superficial core friction factor use the same approach. Use rho C and VSC. How do I get rho C? The formula is here. It's based on alpha C. Alpha C is, look at this. Of course, this doesn't make any sense because we don't talk about any derivation yet. It's just a bunch of formula and you put the value in and you get the number. But number one, you have to be able to do that. Yes? Sometimes film can be laminar, sometimes film can be turbulent. It should not always be laminar. Because it's, yeah, that can be the other way you put it. You have the viscous layer. If you flow fast enough, if you flow fast enough, your film could have wave, right? Okay. It, it can be turbulent too. The film doesn't need to always be laminar. But we, we, you assume one of them and you recheck if your assumption is correct or not. Later, there's a way to check if your assumption is correct. So, alpha, this is a void fraction. This alpha C is a alpha of the core part. That's a formula. VST over VST plus VSL. FE. So, FE is the entrainment fraction. The physical meaning of alpha C, we'll be talking about it later. Okay? But at least you know how to do the project after this class. Okay? You know how to do the project and you should start. So you calculate alpha based on Fe. Then you calculate mu and rho of the, the free property of the core, right? After you get free property of the core, then we can calculate friction factor. So we can calculate superficial core fri uh, frictional pressure loss. We can calculate uh, frictional pressure loss based on the superficial liquid velocity. Then this minus uh, divided by that, we get x sub m square modify log hand uh, log hand Martinelli, Martinelli parameter square x sub m square. So now you can calculate x sub m zero square by multiply by that term one minus a b is something. So in your project, you do this, you get x m zero square. Okay, and you can calculate Ym. Ym is based on our known parameter and superficial core, uh, frictional pressure loss, which is can be calculated upfront. Everything can be calculated upfront, right? Given that you know F sub e. Once you know F sub e, which can be calculated upfront, you can calculate Reynolds number of film. If it is more than twenty one hundred, you assume okay. It's Turbulent flow. And you're awake? <laughs> we don't go back one slide, okay, because we start from here. <laughs> so after you get F sub E, check Reynolds number. If Reynolds number is turbulent flow, so film should be point, uh, M should be point 0.2. If it is lamina, use 1. Okay, That's, that will tell how do we calculate this term. Superficial uh, friction factor for the film. See, check REF. Okay? So once you check REF, you can calculate FSL, FSC, calculate XM square, calculate YM, calculate XM zero square. Then, easiest step, use this chart. Okay? When you have XM square, xm0 square, take the square root. Take the square root, okay? If you don't take the square root, your value will be off a lot. Take the square root, get x sub m, right? From this graph, based on your y sub m, then we can find delta l two dot. Okay, delta l two dot. Get from the graph. After you get delta l two dot, Y sub m is that formula. 
modify inclination angle parameter similar to y but this time is sc okay delta rho g sin theta sin theta is 1 for vertical flow yes then use this graph to get delta l tilde that measure the spin thickness okay easy right Yes, Arya. How do you get this graph? How do I get this graph? Because uh, it's from code and you need some minimum. Yeah, it is from here. It is from here. It's, it's a equation earlier than that. But we won't talk about it yet. We will talk about it. Yes, of course. You want, if you want very accurate, very exact, you don't use a curve. You solve the governing equation directly, right? But if you want to do the project, you can use this curve, no problem. Okay? Because you discretize it in just two sections, right? And you do two cases, so you have to read the chart four times. Not much of a problem. It can be done manually. <coughs> Incline flow. If you do incline flow, you can use uh, okay. For example, slot length is not 20d, it's not 30d. What do you use? 25d. You you may do some kind of average between those two. Give me the practical or most likely number. There's an equation from Chang Unified Model how they get the uh, uh, slot length is a crochet relationship which is the OXM. If you download the OXM last two years ago, it is a final exam of two years ago, there's an equation based on sine theta squared, cosine theta squared or something. 16 and 32, I, I don't remember, but it is that. You don't need to use that. You can go with your approach. If it is 45 degrees, you can say, okay, length, slack length is not 20D, it's not 30D, it's 25D. I accept that. It's not accurate, but it's fine. So at frequency, you may assume that okay, your formula work in that range. Okay, there will be some some assumption, and your assumption and other people's assumption doesn't need to be the same, except you copy it from them. It's very funny angle, yes. Yes, any angle. Any angle. Yes, even for five. Yes, but crochet relationship for that may not be any angle. What was it? Talked about something that so was acceptable for minus 10 and 10 percent. <coughs> uh, that's the flow pattern determination, yes. Titero Dackler model. Okay, let's, let's uh, finish this part so that you can do the project. Once you finish this graph, you read another graph, don't use any of this, okay? Use just that line, phi c squared. So once you get delta altitude from previous graph, go up, read the value. Then you get, if you use this line, you get phi c squared. So you get phi c squared. Okay? What's the difference between this y and the previous y? Previous y what is, is not SL. It's not minus dpdl sub SL. This time it's minus dpdl sub SL. So first read this graph, read this graph, get phi c squared, almost done. After you get phi c squared, uh, then use 4.105. This term is already known. Okay. Superficial core, frictional pressure loss is already known. We know it. Phi c squared is known from your graph, right? This term, rho c is known already, so you can calculate pressure per unit length. Done. You like it? Easy, right? It's easy. Without telling you any derivation, it is easy. So rho c, you get from this equation. Alpha is from this equation. Let's convince you that this approach is good. Uh, look at this. Oh. Overall, where's overall? 
case one. Now uh, this, so we have ancillary model for analog flow. Uh, column five. Uh, where's analog flow? Oh, where we go? Slug. Column eleven. Look at column eleven. See this column eleven. Column eleven is this is ancillary model. Ancillary model for one hundred percent analog flow. The mechanistic model based on what I just told you have uh, I think this is relative performance factor relative performance factor of zero so this means it is better than any other cases okay and sorry model for another flow it use our best model that we just we just talked about what is for FE? Okay, and it has some other part. So, if you use the approach that I talk about, you get better approximation than any other model. Okay, now you can do the project, and you should start very soon. Okay, bye bye.